Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon for everyone attending this webinar. Thank you for coming. My name is Samer, and uh, it's my pleasure to accompany you for uh, for the next one hour in an introduction to supply chain excellence. So, uh, before we start, allow me to wish you all a blessed Ramadan and. Um, uh, thank you for attending in this late time. I wanted to make sure that everyone is accommodated with the time frame because we had um, some notes last time about the time inconvenience of attending uh, for those who attend from the United States and somewhere else. So we thought 10 p.m. Jordan time is the best timing to do that. So thank you for coming. Without further delay, let's kick off our webinar. So, um, some roles, uh, guiding roles for you. Everyone is muted, and um, uh, that's because the number of registration and attendees are high, and it's very hard to accommodate everyone uh, who needs to express themselves through the audio conversations. So, we put everyone in a mute mode, and I see some hands raised, and I see some questions starting. Leave your questions, please, at the chat box. We will make sure to dedicate the last 10 minutes to look into your questions, okay? So this is going to be more of a one-way communication. We are sorry for that, but as I said, it's very hard to accommodate everyone uh, in this webinar, actually. My name is Samer al Madhum from Jordan, and um, uh, basically, um, I had been doing what, what do you call it supply chain excellence for the last 10 years and um, and uh, I thought it would be very good to put this webinar today to introduce the concept of supply chain excellence what is in it for the companies what does it really mean and um, and as always uh, all my webinars are about making you scratch your head thinking how can I advance in the supply chain career going forward? Okay, so we did the risk management uh, one few weeks back, and we're doing this today just to make you think. Uh, I want to think supply chain excellence one day. Okay, so what is this really about, and um, uh, how are we going to excel going forward with the with this webinar actually? Uh, basically, I want to define what is really the concept of supply chain excellence to everyone. Okay, what does it mean, and how does company perceive it, and so on. Then we will dig into why companies want to achieve supply chain excellence. So once we understand the whole concept, we look into the reasons why we want to achieve uh, uh, excellence in an organization. Then. Uh, 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 we will introduce the pillars of excellence at SCORE. We will learn what is SCORE and what do we mean by the pillars of excellence at SCORE. What really constitutes the excellence approach in supply chain uh, management and what is really SCORE, um, the so-called supply chain operation reference model. Then we will look into the uh, an example of how score supply chain operation reference model is configuring a supply chain and how can this approach help us uh, configure our supply chain uh, then we look into what we call it score endorsement for supply chain professionals and uh, basically um, supply chain excellence has been around since a while now where companies try to improve their performance and do their best to uh, uh, to to dominate their markets and so on. So there has been in the past ten years there had been a lot of talks about what can be done to achieve supply chain excellence. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna introduce to you score model today. If you have ever been to an Apex class, probably CCP, CLTD, or CPIM, you must have heard of score, the supply chain operation reference model, more or less. Okay. So let's dig deeper on what, what really makes supply chain excellence uh, a trending approach today. So I looked into the, the internet, uh, I looked into the literature of supply chain in an attempt to understand what do they say about supply chain excellence, okay? Uh, 
So supply chain excellence is defined by improving year-to-year -year financial performance versus a peer group. So companies that attempts to enhance their financial performance in relation to their competitors. And with financial performance, we mean enhancing profitability, reducing cost, uh, better market share, higher ROI. These companies in general, they do achieve that by depending solely in their supply chain performance and thus they do achieve excellence in supply chain by, by improving year-to-year -year financial performance. Another literature looks into this as outperforming the industry. So if you work in an industry or a certain sector, let's say medical manufacturing sector, uh, so outperforming, outperforming an industry on the portfolio of matrices. So you have got certain KPIs that you look at, like for example, speed of delivery, maybe, or something. So you have those set of KPIs and those KPIs, you, you, you do them in a better format than others. And uh, uh, that makes market capitalization, makes you capitalize on your market, like being the fastest to deliver or having the lowest cost to operate. Okay, and that would give you an edge over your competitors, and that would make you ahead of the game. So you achieve supply chain excellence when you have these matrices calculated, and when you have your performance outperforming other industry competitors, actually. Okay, and that would make you capitalize on your market. Also, some others say that supply chain excellence is based on the ability to drive improvement on the complete portfolio of products that you compete against competitors, okay? So in a nutshell, all the definitions of supply chain excellence is about having a supply chain that outperforms other supply chains. So we know for a fact today that supply chain competes against other supply chains today. Companies are no longer competing, their supply chains are competing. And uh, the supply chain that achieve higher excellence in their supply chain would be outperf outperforming other supply chains. So we need to look into what, may, what really makes excellence in the supply chain. How do they perceive excellence? What are the pillars of excellence in supply chain? Uh, uh, today, companies are competing in a red ocean. And with the red ocean, we mean the, uh, the market is full of competition and uh, it is becoming saturated and the, and the customer is getting stronger. So companies have to find a way to to, to compete and to be in the head of the game. So they do this through pillars of excellence that they try to enhance their performance to achieve and compete and sustain their standards in the market. Having said that, um, I'm, I, I will be very interested to look with you on multiple motivations on what companies really wants to achieve to create excellence. They say that motivation is the parent of all excellence. And with that, we mean that companies, they always have motivation to outperform others, okay? So we have listed some international standards of what can be, uh, uh, or what, what can we think of as, um, uh, uh, as um, a pillar for uh, motivation. So uh, some say that motivations is, um, is based on the ability to play with a lower cost. Some would say motivation for excellence would be to perform in a differentiated matter in a supply chain and so on. So there are multiple, multiple perceptions for what we call them motivation. So I want to run a poll with you guys. So let me see if I can just pull this out. Okay, here we go. So, and, and this is a multiple choice question for you. And I want, it, I want you to answer based on your perception for your operations, okay? No matter where you work in a humanitarian setup or you work in a, uh, in a profitable organization or non-profitable organization. And by the way, you can choose multiple uh, answers here, okay? So uh, the question asked, let me just launch the question for everyone. 
So now we are going to distribute a poll that says which one of the following represents what we call it an excellence approach for a supply chain and a motivation why companies, in your perception, why companies wants to uh, to achieve excellence in the supply chain. Okay. And you can choose multiple answers, by the way. Or you can choose one if you want to. And of course, there's no perfect answer. It's just what you think your company would like to do to achieve excellence in the market they operate at. Is it right product, right time, right place at the right cost? Or is it responsiveness in the supply chain in the sense of responding faster to the needs of the customers? Is it really resilience in the sense of adapting to market changes, just like what is happening today with Corona outbreak? Or is it the efficiency, efficiency of supply chain where you, where you play with the lowest cost in the market? So you will be a, co a low cost leader in that sense. So far we have like 70% uh, uh, of you polling. Please keep it going because we want to have a clear perception. We have more than um, 200 attendees today, and we want to see how does every one of you perceive excellence in supply chain. Again, if we go back to the previous slide, excellence in supply chain can be perceived as outperform outperforming the industry portfolio of matrices that correlate closely to market capitalization, meaning you would have those KPIs in place, and those KPIs will put you ahead of the game when you calculate them because you are you are outperforming others. Or it could be that your supply chain performance is enhancing and your profitability is enhancing as a result of, of your KPIs and your actual performance. And that would create an excellence for you. So far we had 81%, 82% of you voting. So, um, and um, I'm looking into somehow what, what shapes the results actually? Very interesting where, where uh, three of the options are closely uh, in the same marks more or less, but we have uh, a majority going towards one of them, okay? And again, there's no, there's no correct and wrong answer. There's only what you think what makes excellence in supply chain. What you think can make excellence in uh, supply chain actually. And the concept of supply chain excellence has been around since 20 years. And companies had been striving to, to bring uh, their best. But the dilemma was always, how can we do that? How can we do that? If we realize that the, the excellence in supply chain is in speed of response, or the excellence in supply chain is the, in the resiliency of our operations, or would it be the lowest cost of operations and so on? Okay, what, how can we put this into action was always the biggest dilemma for companies, okay? So we have 83 of you voting, I think fair enough, fair enough. So I'm gonna, I'm going to close this poll. Are you guys still voting? Okay. I will enjoy my cup of tea as you do guys. Still, the answers are so close, and uh, but one one answer is dominating. But that doesn't make it the ideal answer, as I said, because this is just a perception of a company of how excellence would look like for them. Okay. So fair enough. I would say ninety percent of you answered. So let me share the uh, uh, the polls answers with everyone. There you go. Sharing poll results, 81% believe that deliver excellence in supply chain relates to delivering the right products in the right time, with the right place, to the right customer, and the right cost. 33% uh, of you thinks that also excellence would be responsiveness in supply chain, which means 
responding faster to the needs of the customers. 45% of you guys believe that uh, resilient supply chain, which is a supply chain that moves faster uh, to respond to the changing needs of the markets would be, uh, would be what we call it supply chain excellence. And 39% of you believes that efficient supply chain with lower cost, which creates market domination, is what is today, what we call it today, supply chain excellence. That, that's pretty very interesting. I haven't seen this coming this way, but that's definitely um, a great poll to perceive how supply chain excellence look like for you guys. Anyway, I have also collected an international study for you. This is not your poll. This is an international study that more or less with uh, more than uh, 159 companies um, that, that, that looked into the supply chain excellence approach and how companies they perceive it. And if you look into the um, purple color, if you look into the purple color, 47% of the sample believes that supply chain excellence is delivering the right product to the right place with the right time and the right cost. Okay, and 16% of them believes that it is responsiveness that can adapt, adapting to the market changes needs and so on. And 30% um, looked into having the right product with the right place at the right time, but without cost consideration. And then 11% looked into supply chain excellence as resiliency in the supply chain, which means that the supply chain can stand shocks in demand and supply volatility, just like the corona outbreak. And that would be an excellence in supply chain. And yeah, I, I tend to agree that's an excellence in supply chain. And 7% uh, uh, of the samples of the international companies believe that excellence in supply chain is the efficient supply chain, which means offering the lowest cost uh, of products in, uh, in a supply chain, okay? Regardless what is the answer, there's no black or white, uh, uh, there's no wrong or right answer here, but just how companies perceive uh, being excellent or achieving excellence in competition and in their supply chain. And that's pretty interesting. So now we, we, we started to, to have a look at uh, what is it like to be to create an excellence in supply chain. One of these, or two, or three, or all of them, would make a company achieve excellence in supply chain. Outperforming competitors and so on. Then I looked into the literature. I have doing. I had been doing this since 20 years now, helping companies to achieve excellence in supply chain. And the biggest question was always, what does it really take within my organization boundaries to create the so-called excellence in supply chain. So the, the literature of excellence in supply chain defines four main pillars that companies need to look at in order to, to achieve their market status. Starting with the supply chain performance, the ability to measure supply chain, to see where do we stand today, where do we want to be in the future, and benchmarking our capability to someone else's capability in the market to see how does the gap look like between me and best players in the market, okay? So the first pillar is the ability of companies to measure their performance, to measure their performance. If anyone having sound issue, please log off and come back. If anyone is having sound issue, please log off and come and come back. Okay. So, um, so let me go back because I I have seen some comments and I can't see the slide. This is the slide coming back again. Okay. Um, if you have issues in the sound, please come back. You know, uh, internet is always in pressure. So, how companies define supply chain? This is an international study that uh, perceives 47% of right time, right place, right product is what can be perceived as excellence. 16% goes to responsiveness in supply chain and the adoption to market needs. 13% uh, goes to the right product in the right place in the right time without consideration for costs. 
and 11% goes to resilient supply chain that can stand shocks of demand and supply. And 7% goes to the efficient supply chain with the lowest cost per unit. This is a study that had been published um, a few years back on more than 159 companies. Uh, regardless of which one of them is what defines excellence because excellence is something variable, okay? Excellence is something variable. Uh, regardless how um, uh, how we perceive or companies perceive excellence, we need to look into what makes excellence really within organizations. So what really makes organizations in a status where they can compete in the market and differentiate themselves is four pillars, actually. Performance, processes, practices, and people. And with performance, we mean the ability of the organization to measure its performance and to realize the gap it has in relation to the market needs and in relation to the competition and try to bridge this gap by whatever technique is out there in the market, okay? So maybe you are measuring performance when it comes to how much do you deliver out of right products to the right place in the right time with the right cost and you see yourself not as reliable as competitors and thus that performs a gap in your supply chain. Then, um, once you realize you have a gap in your supply chain, then you have to look into how are you doing things in the supply chain. Do you have the right process in place? Do you have a, 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 a clear way of doing things? So another pillar of excellence in supply chain is having the right process as needed in this case, okay? Then what if this process is not performing well and needs to be reconfigured in a way that makes me do things differently than my competitors. And that where we need to look into what practices out there that we are using and um, uh, what is my competitor uh, using as practices and what is trending in the market today as a practice that can be capitalized upon. Then there might be issue in the people side of the organization where I would have the right process in place um, probably practices in place, but I don't have the the, the right capable uh, uh, people that would uh, execute my performance, my processes, and my practices. So thus came another important part of supply chain is the people of the organization and their ability to enhance their performance, processes, and practices, and so on. Um, so. So these are the four pillars of, uh, uh, of supply chain excellence that had been defined in the literature of supply chain. Uh, and uh, when we always work with companies to enhance their performance, what, what we really look at is those four pillars. How are you performing and what KPIs can be used in place? What processes do you have in place or don't have in place and needs to be added to your supply chain? Are you using the right, the right supply chain practices? Okay, and with a practice, the definition of practice is, a, is the unique way of doing things, the unique way of configuring a process that I have in place. So, for example, um, VMI, Vendor Managed Inventory, is a unique way, is a practice, is a best practice, and uh, it is a unique way to configure the, the inventory planning process that we have. Okay, and that would require those practices like VMI practices, for example, would require certain people skills in place. So how do I how do I go around these four capabilities and where do I get references for them and how can I read more about them and how can I really implement them in my organization and so on? Okay, so I want to introduce to you the the supply chain operation reference model. Twenty years ago bunch of professionals from international companies, they thought it will be good to sit together and try to define the four pillars of supply chain excellence. What is a good performance in supply chain and what needs to be calculated? What are the proper processes we need to look at? What are the practices that can be put in place? And what are the people capabilities that we need in our supply chain? And these four pillars now defines what we call them today the SCORE model. 
the SCORE model, the supply chain operation reference model, is a framework where you can create supply chain excellence by using and capitalizing on the four pillars of supply chain and the connectivity between them. And with connectivity, we mean what is the process that's needed to be here? What are the people skills needed here? What is the KPIs that can measure this process? Okay, SCORE is a living document and living mean that it is updated on annual basis to include new processes, performance measures, trending practices, and so on, okay? So that's a kind of a living document today and a framework that I had been personally using since, since like 10 years now to help organizations enhance their performance and achieve supply chain excellence. Meaning you can use the score model to enhance your company performance. You can use the score model to, to, to measure your supply chain performance. You can use the, the score model to understand the practices that needs to be put in a certain place. You can use the score model to understand the people capability that can be, that can be um, uh, raised to achieve certain excellence in the supply chain and so on. So those who build the score model, the framework, the reference, we call it reference, the reference, they set the four pillars of supply chain excellence together. And they started defining uh, what could be the processes in supply chain, what could be the major performance issues in supply chain, what are the practices that can be needed in supply chain, and what are the people skills in supply chain. And they started to break down the supply chain into planning activities, sourcing activities, making activities, delivering activities, returning activities, and enabling activities, okay? No matter what you do in your supply chain, you are doing on daily basis one of these. If you are doing demand planning or forecasting, that would be a planning process. If you are doing logistics and warehousing activities, that would be delivered process. If you work on supply chain planning or a manufacturing planning or production process, that would be a making process. If you work in procurement, that would be a mix between sourcing and enabling and so on, okay? So the guys from the uh, SCORE model, they, they developed a whole hierarchy of how sourcing looks like, how planning looks like, how making looks like, delivering, returning, and enabling look like or should look like in an international standard that anyone can adopt in the supply chain, okay? and two lines under ability to adopt in the supply chain. Uh, they looked into the performance of supply chain and they say that uh, uh, no matter what you think of supply chain performance, it would be one of these. Reliability issue, responsiveness issue, agility, code, and asset management. And if you look back into the, into the poll that we had, it, it definitely works around these areas. How reliable is the supply chain of delivering right products and so on? How fast is the supply chain in responding? Uh, what is the delivery with the cost efficiency and so on? And they also looked into what practices can be put in supply chain. So they define, they define best practices, emerging practices, and standard practices. And with the emerging practices are the practices that are totally new to the market, trending, but not yet with 100% proven record. For example, blockchain is an emerging practice. Um, 3D printing is an emerging practice. Uh, best practices like S&OP practice, for example. So what am I trying to tell you here is that these practices are broken down inside the framework to tell us how can a best practice be implemented in a supply chain. Okay, how can a standard practice be implemented in supply chain and so on, okay? Um, then if you look into the people capability part uh, in supply chain also, they looked into the skills needed for supply chain, they looked into the training needed for supply chain, aptitudes and experience needed in the supply chain. So if you have the score model today, you can see all these capabilities, performance measures, practices in supply chain, processes of supply chain, people skills in supply chain coming all together, okay, to create a holistic approach for supply chain excellence. And all what we need today is to adapt, to make up our mind and adapt 
these adopt, sorry, adopts these practices, these performance measures, these processes, which has a proven record of enhancing supply chain performance. So for the next 30 minutes, we will just brief into every one of these. These are my supply chain uh, um, processes. As I said, you would be working in one of these, sourcing, planning, sourcing, making, delivering, retaining, and enabling. And uh, your supplier also would have this process in place. And your customer have this process in place. The beauty of the score model is that it can break to you what planning means in supply chain and how does it look like? What sourcing means in supply chain and how does it look like? What is the hierarchy of sourcing? How does a return process look like if you want to adapt it from a score model? So it could be that you don't have a return process. It could be that you, can, you, you would have a return process, but it's not, it's not as good as needed, defected return process, or you want to implement a new return process. The score will help you and will show you around how does the process of return look like from a supply chain perspective, according to international standards, and what KPIs can be used to measure that performance, and uh, what people's skills is needed for the return process to have a robust return process in place in your supply chain. So the, the concept here is that you look into different types of processes, different configurations of processes, and try to figure out uh, are these processes good, damaged, defected, existing, not existing, and so on, and then measure their performance. How, how good is my sourcing process, making, and so on, because these are the pillars of excellence, if we remember that. And then if the process is defected, what practices can be put in place and implemented, and what people's skills is needed to achieve excellence in supply chain. Wow. So you have this holistic approach that can tell you everything about your supply chain. My belief in the score is that, my view in the score is that it's the best thing that happened to supply chain professionals until today. And that's a personal, uh, based on my personal experience working with companies to enhance uh, their performance. The concept of pain in my supply chain is, is where you ask yourself, is where you ask yourself, why do I need to improve my performance? Why do I, I need to achieve excellence? So there has always been a pain in the supply chain. So if I ask you today, if I ask anyone, what is the pain in your supply chain? What is it that you're suffering from? You would say, maybe you would say, my problem is that a customer is always complaining about the incompleteness of the order, okay? Or the uh, customer would always, uh, um, uh, we don't have a clear supply chain strategy. Or uh, it could be that someone would say, uh, we don't have clear communication with customers. Or my problem is that I'm not achieving on-time delivery. So they did this study, same sample, uh, same companies, asking them what is the pain in the supply chain that you have today and what can be done to bridge it. So these are the studies, 43% said understanding the supply chain from an executive perspective, 35% said uh, having the right data, uh, creating analysis on the supply chain, um, uh, availability, uh, talent availability, people part, as we said, uh, shortening the lead time was a pain in my supply chain. Having a clear supply chain strategy is a pain in supply chain. Dirty data is a pain in supply chain. Um, the capitalizing in technology is a pain in my supply chain. The sharing of data in supply chain is a pain as well, and so on. So they, there's a lot of pain. We can list a lot of pains in supply chain that um, uh, the, the, the concept of pain means that I need to do something about it, okay? So you have this motivation why you, why you want to fix something in your supply chain because you have a pain and you need to overcome that pain. Once you, once you overcome that pain, uh, your supply chain is fixed and probably you are ahead of the game, okay? Because, because we have this kind of pain, we need to ask ourselves, what is it my supply chain? And this is part of the excellence thinking. You know, We said that we, not to get lost, there are pillars uh, of supply chain excellence. So we looked into the processes part. So let's have a look into the performance part. There are score defines set of KPIs that you can use and leverage in your supply chain in order to achieve excellence. And if I ask you today, I dare you to name any pain in your supply chain and 
I dare you that this pen would be one of these attributes. Reliability is making a perfect order, delivering the right product to the right customer in the right place. Responsiveness is having the lowest lead time, and that would be reflected by from a cycle time. Agility, we did explain this earlier. Agility is the ability to, to uh, move faster uh, with the market needs and so on. If, if you have ever been to a, an Apex class, I'm sure you are familiar with this. Cost issues, how much is it costing me in my supply chain? Asset management, how is my assets performing in my supply chain? So you would say a customer is always complaining about uh, defects in the delivery. That would be a reliability issue. So what is, what is holding you from achieving excellence or customer satisfaction is a reliability issue. Customers complaining because the orders are always late. That's responsiveness. We sell a lot, but we don't make profit. That's total cost of supply chain. Okay? Uh, we sell a lot, but we don't see the impact on the financial performance at the bottom line. That would be somewhere, probably ROA or cash to cash cycle time or something. The market is changing, but we are not so fast in adapting the market. That would be an agility issue. Okay? So these are known to be the performance issues. So if we go back, if we go back to the very first few slides that talks about the motivation that companies want to achieve supply chain excellence, it's basically the same. Uh, reliability, the one that I ask you about, responsiveness, uh, agility, cost issues and so on. These are the pillars why companies or the motivations why companies want to achieve their supply chain. So you get to, using the score model, you get to learn how to capitalize on the measurements of supply chain and the score model will break down to you. And this is very important. The score model will break down to you how does reliability look like from a measurement perspective. And the score model will tell you exactly how to calculate agility how to calculate um, uh, upside supply chain flexibility, how to calculate cash to cash cycle time from a supply chain perspective, whatever, okay? And you will find that uh, when you look deeper into the score model, we will find that reliability also, uh, if, if reliability is broken, uh, it must be associated with a certain process, okay? So now we go back to the coherence of the four pillars of excellence. These are the four pillars of excellence. So if you measure your reliability here and you find your reliability going down, this might be because a process is not performing very well or a process is not in place or uh, there might be a need to inspect new practices or it might be just the people part is not helping you to achieve excellence. The beauty of SCORE model, the supply chain operation reference model, is that it gets the connection between the four P's coming together, performance, processes, practices, and people. And it tells you for every single process, what is the right performance measures to use, what the right KPIs to implement in place, and what is the people skills needed to achieve that, okay? And my, my humble understanding is that this is the only model out there in the world that helps you to get the four together to create to attempt to create what we call it supply chain excellence. Okay, so uh, uh, what are we agreeing on? Uh, score will show me how these processes are broken down and how do they look like. Score will show me how can I measure my supply chain in relation to my processes, okay? So let's have a look into sample calculation. For example, you wanna measure your uh, uh, reliability supply chain, okay? And that is represented by creating perfect fulfillment perfect order where everything is perfect right product right customer right everything in place okay and so on so that's a sample calculation um, um, I don't want to get dig deeper in the numbers but if you have a fulfillment to be calculated you need to look into the total number of orders that you have okay so you released a hundred order this week and then you want to measure exactly and count exactly how many of these orders, including this one as well, how many of these orders are uh, in a perfect format. And then this is an Excel sheet that I have created myself. How many of these orders are in perfect format in relation to the 100 orders that we released 
uh, today. So, for example, if, if 80% of the orders that you release today are perfect in the sense of right product, right time, right cost, right customer, right documentation, that would make your perfect order fulfillment uh, 80%, for example. Okay, so if we look into an Excel sheet, let me show you an Excel sheet that would look a bit flexible. So we have 400 orders released this week and uh, the total number of orders delivered on time and on customer date are only 70. And the total number of orders delivered in full are only 40. And the total number of orders delivered on time and in full are only 20. That would make my percentage of orders on time and in full to customer date is only 5%. So if we put numbers here randomly, number of orders achieving performance, and then if I say out of, uh, of 400 orders, I have uh, 100 only that achieves the criteria, that would make my perfect order fulfillment 25%. Okay, don't worry about these numbers, they are not the issue. However, what we say here is that my perfect order fulfillment is 25%. What does that technically mean from an excellence standpoint? It means that I'm missing 75% out of the 100 opportunity that I have because my perfect order fulfillment is 25%. What if my competitors in the market, and I need to benchmark myself, what if my competitors in the market are doing better perfect order fulfillment? They are doing 75% perfect order fulfillment. This means I have a gap because my perfect order fulfillment is 25%. The competitors in the market is having 75%. So I have a gap. I need to investigate that gap to understand why this is happening to me. So I would go and dig into my processes. How do they look like? And why are they causing me not to achieve 80% perfect order fulfillment or 75% extra order fulfillment and so on. And this is where the concept of supply chain excellence coming from. My ability to measure my supply chain performance, my ability to dig and inspect the processes, my ability to change using new practices in supply chain, and my ability to enhance people's skills in supply chain in relation to reliability, for example. Okay, To just have a technical look into that, Let's have an example where uh, uh, where you want to structure your supply chain. So your company is considering this is a uh, just a little you know little sneak peek uh, look into the score model. Your company is considering implementing an S&OP process. We know what is S&OP sales and planning, a process where you try to synchronize supply and demand together. Okay. So what are your options? Either that, that there's no process in place. There's no process in place and you were requested to construct a whole new one from the scratch. Or maybe the process exists, but it's not mature at all. Or probably process is mature, but it's not doing its best, it's not optimized. Okay. The question is, can I use this core model, the collection of, of, uh, um, of people, performance, uh, practices, and processes to construct uh, an s and p process in my organization, the definite answer to this is, of course, you can do that, okay? Why? Because this is what a score is all about. It tells you what processes has to be there, plan, source, make, deliver, return, and enable, okay? And by the way, uh, s and p says operational planning is a plan process, okay? So you will see the whole breakdown of s and p process when it comes to the configuration of planning in your supply chain that area and i will get to see kpis that relates to the s and p process okay and i get to see practices that enhances the s and p process and i get to see people skills that is needed for s and p process okay all by using the score itself you might be a, a consultant and by the way this is my favorite part uh, being uh, consulting with companies in supply chain and uh, having the score as a framework where I use it to define everything for the supply chain of the organization. Okay, so my, you might be a consultant and you are asked and tasked to create uh, a robust S&OP process. You might be a supply chain manager and you are requested to create one or optimize one. Can you do that using score? Of course you can do this. 
okay so having a sneak peek into into score score will define to me the following processes to construct a sandopi process it says you have to do sp 1.1 which means planning 1.1 then you have to do planning 1.2 planning 1.3 planning 1.4 and if you just have a look at them the 1.1 is identify prioritize and aggregate requirements which means try to understand how does the demand look like in your organization once you do that please deploy 1.2 which means identify prioritize and aggregate supply chain resources which means supply side activity so the whole s&p process is about uh, um, synchronizing supply and demand so you start by demand side activities then you go to uh, supply side activities then what do you do 1.3 which means balance the supply chain resources with requirements balance s1.2 with 1.1 which means sit in a meeting where you try to synchronize supply and demand and once you do that please execute 1.4 which is basically establish and communicate supply chain plans tell everyone about the outcomes of the s and OP meeting that you had, okay? So in a fast look into the score model, which looks like a dictionary in supply chain, it tells you immediately, this is what you need to do to construct an, an s and OP process, P1.1, P1.2, P1.3, P1.4. Is that it? Of course, no. It tells me also, because supply chain excellence is about performance, practices, people, and processes, I can dig deeper into what KPIs is needed to measure P1.1, what practices is needed to, uh, uh, to deploy in P1.1, what people skills is needed to, uh, uh, to deploy in P1.1. So the next slides dig deeper inside the first process of a P1.1. And for P1.1, the great KPI, the, the most convenient KPI to understand how good is your supply chain requirements is to calculate forecast accuracy. So now I know if I want to deploy the uh, identify, prioritize, and aggregate supply chain requirements, uh, I need to measure performance by using forecast accuracy. And one great practice that can be implemented in this place is integrated business planning or demand planning and forecasting. And the people skills that's required to make this process work very well would be CRM, customer relationship management, and demand management skills. So what have the score done for me here? It told me about the four pillars of excellence in supply chain, what needs to be done to construct a SNDP process, what KPIs are needed in place, what practices can be deployed, a unique way to configure the process, which is basically integrated business planning or demand planning, and what people's skills are needed in that place, which is basically SP 1.1, to nail it and to master the process in order to achieve supply chain excellence. And I would have these charts that tells me, for example, for the great practice that's called uh, uh, sales and operation planning, these are the processes associated with operation planning. As we said, P1.1, P1.2, P1.3, P1.4, and we just had a look into P1.1, which is basically identify, prioritize, and aggregate supply chain. It would tell me what KPIs works in this place. Process. So if you want to construct KPIs for s and process, why don't you measure perfect order fulfillment, which is delivering right products in the right place and so on. So if you have proper, what does that mean? If you have proper s and process in place, I am sure that this KPI, when you measure it, is going to be great. If your perfect order fulfillment, which is reliability, is high, it means that sales and operation planning is doing very well in place. And we know for a fact that people's skills that's needed in this place is, let's say, demand management. And then somewhere else, you would look into the human skills that's called demand management, and SCORE will tell you exactly which processes is it associated with. Of course, it's associated with C process, right, here. And uh, this is the experience needed for someone that does demand management on the ground. So the, the, the coherence here, the beauty of SCORE is that it creates coherence between the four Ps together. 
we call this like a cross-functional approach between uh, and cross-referencing between the four P's together. Performance, processes, practices, and people coming all together in one place. Wow. So uh, can I use this as a consultant? Of course, you can construct every single, you can examine every single process in supply chain for any company that you want using the SCORE model. Uh, can I use it as a supply chain manager to build my processes? Of course. Can I adopt the KPIs in this place, uh, in this core model for my company? Of course you can do this. Can I build a hierarchy of people skills for those who works in the s and process? Of course you can do this. You just name it. This is really supply chain excellence, your ability to get the four Ps coming all together. Can I use SCORE for risk management? Absolutely. Because today we live in a, in a uh, we had a webinar last week about risk, risk management and the question that came to my mind, can we use the framework called SCORE for risk management? Yeah, because after the corona outbreak, you will need to rethink your supply chain. You will need to rethink your current processes. You will need to rethink your practices. You will need to rethink people's skills. So you can use the whole framework together to rebuild an entire supply chain and configure an entire supply chain in place, okay? So yes, we can use SCORE and we can implement the practices inside SCORE and the processes guidelines, the performance measures inside SCORE uh, uh, to build our uh, supply chain going forward in the future, okay? Is this only what is SCORE is all about? Definitely no, definitely no. I'm gonna tell you shortly about uh, 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 what else you would learn in SCORE, but uh, to start with great readings, if you want to learn more about how to use SCORE, please buy this book, it's amazing, uh, download it or whatever you want, it's called The Supply Chain Excellence a Handbook for Dramatic Improvement uh, using SCORE model by Peter uh, Polstroff and Peter is available on LinkedIn, you can connect with him and so on. This is an amazing book that changed my life literally and it tells a story of a company that's implementing the SCORE model. So it's very practical, it's very technical, uh, it's a great guideline how to implement SCORE model. Okay. Uh, can I get a training? Uh, yeah, you can get, uh, you can go out there and get SCORE P endorsement, which basically uh, teaches you how to use the excellence model altogether uh, to enhance supply chain performance, okay? So this is a, an endorsement by Apex, by the way. Um, somehow, like when you think of CCP, CPIM, these are certificates, international certificates, and uh, also Apex has the SCORE P, SCORE Professional Endorsement, which basically teaches you how to get all these four pieces together to help your company achieve excellence in supply chain or any company out there uh, if you want to consult so uh, with, with these companies. Uh, it will, this certificate will help you demonstrate uh, individual knowledge of how to use this model, techniques to measure, manage, and improve uh, uh, your supply chain. Uh, who can get uh, the SCORE uh, certificate? Anyone. Do you have to be CSCP? No. Uh, do you have to be CLTD? No. Do you have to have 10 years of experience in supply chain? No. All you have to do is the desire to just, you know, uh, learn how to construct a supply chain. Um, sometimes I think of SCORE like something that needs to be uh, put in logistics schools for everyone to learn how supply chain should be constructed actually, okay? I had been teaching SCORE in the last 10 years for even IT people who wants to learn how to configure their supply chain using the technology. So what is also SCORE is about? SCORE is about also learning an improvement program. So it's not only the four Ps, performance practices, people and skills, uh, coming all together, you learn step by step to achieve supply chain excellence. Step number one, and we call this the score restructs. Step number two, step number three, step number four, and step number five. Mm -hmm. So I had, I had been advocating this for the past five years, five steps approach to create supply chain excellence, including prioritizing your supply chain, supply chain, um, creating a geographic map for your supply chain, calculating your supply chain performance, um, measuring your supply chain, matrices selection, uh, benchmarking your supply chain to someone else in the industry to see how good are you, making a gap analysis in your supply chain to understand the size of the problem, 
then constructing improvement programs, project portfolios, testing your readiness to implement those um, uh, improvement portfolios using the four P's that we learned about briefly in our supply chain, okay? Supply chain excellence is, uh, is, uh, is something living that companies need to achieve in their supply chain. They asked 100 company, what is your motivation to use the supply chain operation reference model? And this is just a sample of 13 motivations. And I bet you, if you are in a senior position now, I bet you one of these would, would be something that you want to aim for to achieve supply chain excellence. Some companies used SCORE to create a supply chain strategy. Some companies use SCORE to construct the use of technology with better utilization and maximization. Some of them used it to improve the supply chain operation planning, a stand-up process. Some of them uh, used it to achieve operation excellence, as we say. Some of them wanted to increase the ROI of the organization and so on. And you name it, and you name it. There are great cases out there. Just go Google uh, uh, cases of companies that... Uh, implemented score, you, you see companies like Coca-Cola, Amazon, Dell, Fly Emirates, they have great cases of how they use the model, the four P's coming together to achieve supply chain excellence, okay? So now we have, uh, uh, I tried to make this as short as I can. Uh, I'm gonna look into your questions if you have any. I have seen a bunch of questions. I've seen, I've, uh, there are some comments as, as uh, I cannot, uh, select any answer. I'm sorry for that, Junaid. Um, can't see screen, I'm sorry for that. Uh, some technical issues happens all the time. Um, okay, Badr is asking the same, no slides. I'm showing the slides, okay. Uh, one question is um, from Faris. Faris is asking, drivers of excellence are the same as balanced scorecard perspective? Faris, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah, uh, scorecard, uh, the balanced scorecard is a great approach to create a strategy and implement it in place, but the score is more of a framework that drives down not only performance fares, but also practices, people, skills, and processes in place. Okay. Um, Mr. Supply Chain uh, is asking, good job, thank you. Okay. Great content, Wael. Uh, apart from Apex material, do we have any other box sources for learning? Niraj is asking. Niraj, yeah, get the box. This is a great book. Um, uh, you can buy, download, or something, Supply Chain Excellence. It's a great book, and um, I benefit from that uh, uh, implementation big time, actually. So I highly recommend that for you. Okay, more questions? Trust between companies. Can you send these, uh, us the sheets? Uh, voila, no problem. Yes, of course, I can share that. Does it need to be huge previous experience? Ward is asking, uh, does it need to be huge uh, previous experience before taking the score? No, Ward, I, I've said that anyone can take the score. This is not really about the score education. This is really about creating a supply chain, excellence thinking in your organization. But one short way to do this, uh, Ward, is to, is, to, uh, is to look into the score model because it's a, it's a great capability built in um, ready-made for you to create supply chain excellence. Your you, word, no, you don't have to have great uh, experience to learn score. Uh, what is the training fee? This is outside the scope, uh, Thiva or something else, okay. Uh, Ahmed is asking, I uh, would like to know which courses from Apex designed uh, for who works in ERP application. Ahmed, uh, I will have a webinar next week about uh, education and supply chain, so stay tuned to answer your question there. Uh, what is the process score P endorsement? Uh, while is basically passing exam, if you are asking about uh, what makes you a score P, is basically the, uh, the you go into an exam called score P by Apex and you pass it, and for that you need to attend a class. Elias is saying CCP provides guidelines for designing, executing, and controlling supply chain. So, do we actually need score? Of course, uh, Elias, this is a I, I love this question. CCP is providing guidelines for designing, executing, and controlling, but it does not tell you. Uh, um, it, it gives you a great, amazing overview um, uh, in, uh, in supply chain, but it does not tell you how to construct improvement programs. And this is what I'm trying to tell you, is that uh, when you go to uh, SCORE, you learn uh, about um, a whole methodology, like this methodology for... Uh, 
uh, for supply chain excellence, uh, how to choose programs for improvement, how to benchmark your supply chain, how to construct and deconstruct your supply chain, how to analyze gaps in your supply chain. So this is a bit different, but uh, I would say learning anything in supply chain is, uh, is an add-on, like uh, having, for example, uh, um, uh, having, for example, score education or CCP education or CPIM uh, is an add-on, definitely. Mr. Supply Chain says, uh, how about the book Supply Chain Management for Dummy? Yeah, it's a great book, and I highly recommend everyone to read it as well. Uh, Firas is asking about score in relation to continuous improvement. This is a brilliant question, Firas. Uh, what does score do is uh, to propose practices that works very well in a certain place and one of the practices that can be uh, proposed by score is uh, suggesting that you can use uh, lean thinking and continuous improvement thinking to enhance your performance what is the difference between ccp and score uh, Tariq, leave this to next week because uh, this is the uh, next week is about supply chain certifications um, ARP consultants, can we say SCORE is a tool for setting supply chain strategy? Yes, better, big time, big time. SCORE is a great way to set a supply chain strategy that's being being ahead of the game by, uh, by uh, outcoming performance uh, of competitors through reliability. And this is exactly perfectly better as what is the uh, SCORE doing. It's a great way to set a supply chain strategy, actually. Okay. I think I'm uh, I'm covering the majority of the questions here. Um, can score be used in project management? Yes, uh, Ajaj, uh, Ajay, sorry, Ajay, great question. Uh, yeah, score can be used in project management. Score actually, this is very funny. Score is a, a, a is a my personal view after ten years of experience in implementing score between companies. You will end up uh, making projects using score model supply chain projects very specific supply chain projects fire yeah so because uh, uh, if you look into the improvement model here it talks about optimizing projects actually in your supply chain so this feels like having projects of improvement in your supply chain or setting actually a whole improvement program in your supply chain so yes i can think of um uh, I can think of SCORE as a, an improvement program, big improvement program, but that's just really bigger, bigger than project management. Project management is a small aspect of SCORE, okay? Uh, Saleh Joban is asking, as a beginner, should we start to learn CSCP before SCORE? Um, the, the, they are not relevant. Uh, every one of them takes you in a different direction, Saleh. Uh, please bear with me until next week. Next Saturday, I'm going to talk about supply chain certifications, and then I'm going to answer your question about that. Um, uh, Jamshid is asking, coherence of four Ps is the key to excellence. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, yes uh, Jamshid, the four Ps of score, performance, processes, practices, and people is, is what you need to learn to create uh, excellence and the coherence be between them is actually uh, what makes excellence in supply chain. Is SCORE a good tool for management? Absolutely, Saleh. Um, whenever we talk about, uh, uh, Saleh Juban is asking, is, is SCORE a good tool for management? Uh, whenever we show the upper management around what can they do with SCORE, uh, literally, literally, it gets them uh, interested genuinely in how to enhance supply chain performance. Uh, Junaid is asking, can SCORE be applied in NGOs where there are very low supply chain management? Yes, Junaid, it's, uh, I had been advocating the, uh, Junaid, this is funny, I had been ad advocating the SCORE model for the United Nations for the past five years in every single mission they have because they want to reconstruct their supply chain. Okay, especially in the hard times of cost management and so on, they want to do something different in their supply chain. They want to learn how to create agility, what practices can be put in place for uh, for advancing warehousing management and so on. So yes, Junaid, uh, uh, regardless of, uh, I disagree with you that uh, um, um, low supply chain maturity, ah, okay, I get you now. Yes, actually, because score is about increasing the maturity in supply chain. So SCORE can be like the Bible that, uh, uh, that uh, humanitarian sector can use to reconstruct a whole supply chain, even if it's not mature, okay? 
Samir Daroz is asking, uh, um, uh, what is the difference between score and Six Sigma? Um, they are not relevant. Uh, Six Sigma is a quality management tool. Score is a framework for supply chain excellence. Score would recommend saying, why don't you use Six Sigma in this place precisely to fix that problem? So Six Sigma of, is one of the practices that SCORE would recommend to enhance a broken process. Uh, Muhammad Hani is asking, could SCORE replace uh, CSCP? Uh, the, the, the question is a bit complicated. Of course, no, because SCORE is about enhancing how to, uh, learning how to enhance your supply chain. CSCP teaches you supply chain practices. Okay, so there's a different direction here, Muhammad. Stay tuned for next week to talk about both, actually. Uh, Badr Bamukbal uh, is asking, is there a standard toolkit for deploying a score that can someone uh, use? Of course, man, that's the score material, the score framework itself. Uh, once uh, you get to learn how to use the score, you receive a whole uh, you receive a whole kit, uh, a framework of uh, A, B, C steps, what to do and how to do, and you receive the whole framework of people, processes coming all together, and so on. So yes, better, but that would require you to read more about it or come to a class anywhere in the world where you can learn how to use SCORE in reality. What is the difference between SCORE and GSCF? Muhammad, I don't know what is GSCF, please let me know. Uh, Ajay Bahan is asking, since I am currently working on waterfall technique and have done Scrum too, how can SCORE be helpful in project management? A SCORE is not a tool to teach you project management. SCORE uh, will initiate a project for supply chain improvement. But the bulk of work, Ajay, happens before the project where you where you try to analyze the problem in supply chain, understand the, the, uh, the gap in your supply chain, then construct projects to enhance it, okay? So I, I wouldn't recommend that you attend a SCORE training to learn about project management, but rather to learn how to enhance your supply chain. Um, Junaid is asking, how long time is needed to get full uh, class score? I think uh, it's all over the world, three full days, three full days. What is your recommendation? Ghassan is asking, what is your recommendation uh, for a logistics officer? to be able to, um, to handle, what is your recommendation to get full close to the officer to be able to handle, let me just get to this question, please. To handle logistics manager position. Well, uh, Ghassan, I think this is a bit outside the scope. I will ask you kindly to, um, to attend my next class next week uh, to answer this question. More questions coming. Um, uh, how can we get the lesson slides? Uh, Hussam, slightly, uh, uh, I will be, I'll be happy to share these slides with you, Hussam. Uh, Yasser Bader is asking, how score can be applied when it comes to running uh, operations which is completely outsourced? Um, eventually, score is about measuring the supply chain performance and finding the gap regardless of the organization um, outsourcing status, yes, sir. Um, so you have set of measures like cost of supply chain, um, agility of supply chain. So we can see and test and attest how outsourcing is benefiting us in the supply chain measures. And uh, how is my outsourced party is performing? So you can deploy the whole score performance measures in your, in, in your, sub, in your supply chain partner uh, that you outsource the transportation to, for example. Uh, more coming, we are nearly there. What is your recommendation? Uh, half of Morar is asking, what is your recommendation for supply chain KPIs book? Uh, I suggest you read the, uh, the book that I highlighted, the supply chain excellence using uh, score model. It has a great set of KPIs. Elias is asking, as I, I, as I understand, score does not include uh, processes related to sales and procurement. Um, well, Elias, it does include actually, uh, it does include more information about the procurement part, yeah, more, uh, more than the sales part, because procurement is considered an enabler at score, okay? So yeah, it does have a whole set of uh, procurement KPIs, practices that can be applied in the supply chain. 
Um, okay. Can you please share the slides? That will be my pleasure. Um, so Muhammad comes back and say the GSCF is the Global Supply Chain Forum model by Lambert. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with that, Muhammad, but I will make sure to uh, to dig that for you and stay in touch with me, and I'm going to get back to you with the differences between them. Okay, uh, every process model. Muhammad, I have seen you have written a lot about the GSCF, and I will be very interested to share that with you, actually. Okay, okay, I think that's it for now. We have taken too much of your time. Uh, we have exceeded 10 minutes, actually. Uh, I will be happy to uh, to take more questions from you guys. Just put your questions at info at muhakat.com if you want, uh, or get in touch directly with me or my team. I will be happy to answer all your questions. I want to thank you very much and wish you happy Ramadan and blessed days. And um, thank you uh, for uh, attending, actually. It's been an hour and a half almost. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Firas. Thank you, Badr. Thank you, Samer. Thank you, Elias. Okay, stay tuned for next week. We're going to have a new uh, session about uh, supply chain education, supply chain certificates. And I hope the timing was convenient for everyone. Yatikum al kulkum. And thank you very much. Ramadan Kareem. Thank you, guys.